8.5 solving rational inequalities. I'm going to do a couple of examples. Okay, so we have x plus 1 over x plus 3 greater than or equal to 2. Remember on the previous video, I told you we were going to have two cases. So case 1. The least common denominator is positive. And case 2, the least common denominator is negative. Okay, so we're going to solve x plus 1 over x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 2. Multiply both sides by x plus 3. So then we have x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 6. We want to combine our x's. So then we have x is less than or equal to negative 5. Okay, so step 2, we have to take into consideration the sign of the least common denominator. So x plus 3 is greater than 0, since we said it was positive. If we solve for x, then we get that x is greater than negative 3. So we have two solutions, and we have to check. So we said that x was less than or equal to negative 5, or x was greater than negative 3. So let's test when x equals negative 6. When x equals negative 6, we end up with um, negative 5 over 3, over negative 3, greater than or equal to negative 2, 2 positive 2, sorry, and 5 thirds is greater than or equal to 2. Is that true? No, it's false. So then that's not a solution. What about x greater than negative 3? What do we test x equals negative 2? When we plug it in back to our inequality, we will get 1 over negative 1. Is that greater than 2? No, that's false. So then that's not an answer. Now let's go over um, case 2. That's when our least common denominator is negative. So if we solve for x, let's start by multiplying by x plus 3. Since we said that the least common denominator is negative, remember that when multiplying by a negative sign, then we reverse the inequality. So now we have x plus 1 is less than or equal to 2x plus 6. When we simplify, we get that negative 5 is less than or equal to x. Now we have to take into consideration um, the sign of the least common denominator. So then we say that x plus 3 is less than 0, since we said that it was negative. If we solve for x, then x is less than negative 3. So we have x greater than or equal to negative 5, or x less than negative 3. So let's test those values. What if we test x equals negative 4? When we plug it in into the original inequality, we end up with negative 3 over negative 1. Is that greater than or equal to 2? Yes. So that's true. OK, what about x is less than negative 3? What if we test x equals negative 4? When we plug it back into the original inequality, we will get negative 3 over negative 1. Is that greater than or equal to 2? Yes. That's true. So then for our solution, we have that x is less than negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to negative 5. If we write it in set builder notation, we can write it as the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to negative 5 and less than negative 3. Let's do another example. What if we have 1 over x minus 2 
minus 1 over x plus 2, less than or equal to x squared over x squared minus 4. Once again, we're going to have two cases. Case 1, the least common denominator is positive. In case 2, the least common denominator is negative. Okay. So we want to solve for x, right? x squared minus 4 is the same thing as x minus 2 times x plus 2. So if I multiply this side, they cancel. If I multiply all of this by that, x minus 2 times x plus 2. My x minus 2 are going to cancel. So then I end up with x plus 2 minus x plus 2 are going to cancel. So I end up with x minus 2 is less than or equal to x squared. Um, if we distribute the negative sign, then you can see that our x's cancel. So 4 is less than or equal to x squared, which means that x is greater than or equal to plus or minus 2. If you go back to the inequality, it's going to make the inequality undefined. So then those values will not work. So what if we set the denominator greater than 0 because it's positive? So then we're saying that x squared is greater than 4. When we take the square root, x is greater than plus or minus 2. So let's check those values. If we have um, x equals 0, then we get 1 over negative 2 minus 1 over 2 is less than or equal to 0. Yes, we get negative 1 fourth less than 0, which is true. Now, what if we check when um, x is less than 2? Let's try x equals negative 4. When we plug it back into our inequality, we get 1 over negative 6 minus 1 over negative 2 less than or equal to 16 over 12, which simplifies to 2 over 6 or 1 half less than or equal to 16 over 12, which is true. Okay, so for this side, we have that x is greater than 2 and x is greater than negative 2. Okay, now let's go to the other side when our least common denominator is negative. Um, if we multiply by a negative um, expression, uh, remember that our inequality is going to change. So then, um, then we're going to end up with um, x plus 2 minus x minus 2 is greater than or equal to x squared. Our x's cancel and we end up with 4 is greater than or equal to x squared. So then x is less than or equal to plus or minus 2. If we plug it in, it's going to happen with the same thing that happened on this side. That's going to be undefined. So then those values we will not be using. So now let's take into consideration the least common denominator, which is negative. So then x squared minus 4 is less than 0. If we solve, then x is less than plus or minus 2. So let's test those values. For x less than 2, what if we um, test when x equals 1? So when we plug it in into the original one, we end up with negative 4 over 3 less than or equal to negative 1 third, which is true. Okay, now let's check a value for x greater than 2. x equals 3. When we plug it in into the original one, we get 4 fifths less than or equal to 9 fifths, which is true. So then for this side, we have that x is less than 2, or x 
is greater than two. For our solution, instead of writing that x is greater than two, x is greater than negative two, x is less than two, x is greater than two, we can say that um, our solution is the set of all x's, which are elements of the real number, and x cannot be equal to two or negative two. And that's it.